In order to find out the least cost route using the transportation model, there are certain assumptions that are made. Let's understand those assumptions. So the first assumption is that the total quantity of product available at different sources is equal to the total requirement at different destinations. So in this case, our sources are P1, P2 and P3. So the total quantity of product available at these sources is 40. This is 40 for S1. S2 is 35 and S3 is 70. So this becomes 40 plus 35 is 75. 75 plus 70 is 145. So this is the total of supply. Now this should be same as the total of demand. So demand is equal to 45 plus 65 for the second warehouse plus 35 for the third warehouse. So this is equal to 65 plus 45 is 110, 110 plus 35 is 145. So what this means is that this problem can be solved using transportation model because it satisfies the first assumption. So the first assumption is total supply is equal to the total demand. The second assumption is that the products can be transported conveniently from all sources to all destinations. What this means is that if we have three sources, which is P1, P2, P3, and three destinations, W1, W2, and W3, the products can be transported conveniently from each of these sources to each of the destinations. So P1 can transport the material to W1, W2, or W3. Similarly, P2 can transport the material to W1, W2, or W3. And P3 can also transport the material to W1, W2, or W3. So the second assumption is product can be transported conveniently from all sources to all destinations. The third assumption is that the unit transportation cost on a given route is directly proportional to the number of units shipped on that route. So that means that let's say this route P1 to W1, the unit cost is two rupees per unit. Now, if the quantity being shipped is 10, then the total cost of transportation becomes two multiplied by 10. 10 is the quantity and two is the cost. So this becomes 20. Now, if the quantity to be shipped is 20, then the cost becomes 2 multiplied by 20. So in other words, the unit transportation cost on a given route is directly proportional to the number of units shipped on that route. So the third assumption is the unit transportation cost on a given route is directly proportional to the number of units shipped on that route. The fourth assumption is that the unit transportation cost of the product from all sources 
to destinations is certainly and precisely known. So for each route, let's say P1 to W1, P1 to W2, P1 to W3, we know the precise cost of transporting each unit on each route. So the fourth assumption is that the unit transportation cost of the product from all sources to destinations is certainly and precisely known. The fifth assumption is that the objective is to minimize the total transportation cost for the organization as a whole and not for individual supply and distribution centers. So as we had seen in the previous videos, we could minimize the cost of transportation by individual warehouse. However, at the end, we realized that if we had taken a holistic approach, we would have gotten a better result. So that is our fifth assumption, which is the objective is to minimize the total transportation cost for the organization as a whole and not for individual supply and distribution centers. So distribution center was also similar to warehouses. So we are not trying to minimize the transportation cost for individual facility, but for the whole organization. So these are the five basic assumptions for using transportation model in solving these kind of problems.